Hi everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to perform a walkthrough um, to show you how to create th these three charts um, using conditional color formatting. So for the first one I'm going to look at minimum and maximum values, um, both for the color and for the value. Um, for the next one we'll look at values above and below uh, an average, but this could be applied to anything like a median or a percentile. And then for the third one, what we're going to look at is above and below um, a sort of target area that is specified using parameters. Um, and then using a little bit of a bonus, we'll add in these um, sort of smart dynamic subtitles, um, looking at min and max values, looking at total months greater or less than whatever the specified amount is, like an average. And then also again with this uh, parameter, so a bit of uh, <clears throat> additional um, dynamism is that if we have this target area we can change it um, so that we can expand or contract that um, that way uh, also um, if we want to change the date range um, we can do that and the min and max values will be dynamic so it'll be within the range of your date range and also the average will recalculate um, and also our uh, subtitles again if we're looking at 15 months instead of the full 22. So if this is something that um, interests you, um, be sure to stick around and find out. This is a short to-do list looking at the minimum, maximum values. We're going to create measures, look at color formatting and creating those subtitles and we're going to do that for all three of those. And if you wish to follow along, um, I have my blank model. Um, there's a link in the um, notes in this video. If you want to download from my Google Drive, um, feel free to follow along. I also use this um, data set for um, a lot of my other videos, so it might be a useful resource. Okay, let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with uh, my favorite, which is the net order revenue. Um, if you've followed some of my uh, previous uh, walkthroughs, you'll see um, I've created this several times before, but I'll rewrite it here. So we want the net order revenue, which is our sum X of our order details. And what we want to do is we want to multiply the unit price times the quantity. Um, times one minus the discount. So that is our net revenue. It's probably hiding down here somewhere. And um, so we can reassign the table here instead of having in the date table, we just push it to our measures table. So that's sitting up here. Okay, so next we want to create our base um, uh, bar chart. So we want our net order in the y-axis and then for the x-axis we want the end of month, oops, end of month in the x-axis. All right, so I want a couple of formats in here and so I want to um, for the page itself, um, just something slightly larger, so 900 by 1600, just to fit all three of these charts in. Um, and for these themselves, what I want to do is for the x-axis, I want it as categorical, so I see each month um, in play. Um, I want to take off the title, take away grid lines on it as well. Um, take out the title for the time being. And what I want to do is just put a bit of a filter on the end of the month. I just don't want this, this May 2015 is, a, is an active month. I just don't want to have it in there. So I'll select all, remove anything that's blank that might be in there. June and May. So I just have from July 2013 to April 2015. I'll just check the y-axis on the title. Uh, that should be good enough. So I 
think that's good enough for all three. Let me just double check the size. Let's go 35. Yeah. So what we want to do here is just because we want to use this for all three, um, just create a triple of them all so that we can just work on each one individually. Okay, for the max and min, now we want to create two measures, one to calculate the maximum and one the minimum um, for our desired date range. So the first measure will be the maximum revenue month. So maximum month. So what we want to do is create a, a variable first for the max rev and we're going to use a iterative um, function. So what we want is the maximum from all selected um, date end of month. Um, and we want that to be based on the net revenue. So basically we want to go through each, <coughs> each end of month and get the maximum. And then we, what we want to do is return. So if the max rev is equal to the net order, then we want the max rev. Otherwise we want blank. So basically this is saying, <coughs> If this maximum revenue is equal to any of these net order revenues, then we'll return the maximum revenue. Otherwise, just leave it blank. You'll see in a minute how that works. And then what we want to do is, um, let's make sure I've hit return there to create that measure. We want to create <coughs> a similar measure for the minimum. And it's as simple as just creating that. We can rename the variable just so that it's not confusing to people. And again, that goes through each um, net order revenue at the end of each month and creates a variable to get what, what's the minimum in the selected time period. And then if it equals that minimum, then return the minimum, otherwise it's blank. So if I just drop in a table and put in um, in the month and our net revenue and our min and max. And just expand this, you'll see for the minimum is 18,000. So that's the minimum month and the maximum is one, two, three. So that's, this is basically what it's showing. Um, I think I might've covered this in the previous video, but it's just, it's good to see what the, the measures are outputting so you understand. Okay, so next we wanna create the conditional color formatting um, for the bar chart or the column charts themselves. And so again, we're gonna use um, uh, some variables and a switch tree function. So we want our min max color format. So what we want to do is declare the variable for the max rev first. And it's literally just the, um, the measure. And the variable for the min rev is equal to the minimum. And then we want to return um, our switch tree. So if the net order revenue is equal to the max rev. So what do we want if the net order revenue equals the max revenue? Um, I want to return my usual um, sort of matte green Four five seven eight eight C, um, <clears throat> and if the net order revenue 
is equal to the min ref, then I want to return this kind of yellowy orange um, color. Um, I think it was pointed out to me in uh, some comments that um, it was good that I was using this color because it's a bit more accessible than this sort of green red. Um, so that, that was one of the reasons why I opted for this orange yellow instead. And for this maximum and minimum, we have the maximum is this sort of green, the minimum is this red, or sorry, yellow, and then anything else in between, we just want like a light gray that sort of fades into the background. Um, so I'll use E0, hash E0, E0, E0. <clears throat> and that is our min max um, color format. Now you'll remember in the, what I showed you earlier, we also had the value that sits out above as well. And so what I want to do is that's the color format. I also want to create a different um, measure for the font as well. So we'll put in font. And what we want to do is, it's basically the same formula, but instead of that gray, because we've got a white background, I'm just going to use white. So if the number is not max or min, the font will be colored white. And because it's white, it just blends into the background. So you only see the maximum and the minimum. Okay, so I return that. Now it's time to do a little bit of formatting on this. So we can go to our um, columns and we go to field value. We go to max main color format. So now we're getting this maximum and minimum. Um, and then also our data labels, we want to turn those on. And the values, we have this condi conditional formatting as well that we can use. So again, we go to our field value. This is why it's good to call them like color format or font because they're easy to find. Um, so you'll see there that those values are in the background, but um, it's only highlighting the minimax. Uh, and maybe what we can do is make those bold as well. So next I want to create the subtitle for this. So again, another measure. So we call it subtitle. Again, it's good just to have these names. You can create your own, but it makes it easier to find them when you're searching for them in the field parameters that if you call it color format or color font or subtitle, um, they're easier to find. So subtitle max min, so again, our variable on our max, max rev. Um, we can't just call out the, um, the measure that we created previously because we had a bit of a, an if statement on it. What we just want to have is what is the maximum rev and what is the minimum rev um, in, as, as a total. So max will just be our max. Um, all selected and a month and the net order var min rev is the minimum. It's basically the same. We'll just copy this one down. We're just create, recreating those calculations, but we're removing that if statement. Um, we want to return again. If you if you've watched any of my previous videos where I've created um, subtitles, you'll recall that the subtitle has to be in a text format. It can't be in a like a number format. So what we have to do is create the variables for this min and max value, and then format them as text. Okay, so. We want to return, what we want to call this is the max rev. So we have our text initially, we put a space in there. And then we want to format our value. So the, the, the value that we want to format is the max rev. And how do we want to format that? So we want to have it as in um, thousands of dollars. So we have our dollar 
um, hash, and then we have uh, zero, sorry, zero K. So we have to concatenate anything that we want to put in here. So we want one of these pipes in the middle, or I want one of these pipes in the middle anyway, and then concatenate again. So and and then what we want to have is the min revenue. So again, we have to open our um, uh, speech marks min rev. Oh, sorry, min rev. Put those speech marks and then another and and. Then we want our format again. So we want to format our minimum value. So format min rev. And then again, it's how we format that. So it's the same as what we had before. So it's in thousands of dollars. Oops. So that is that. What we can do is go to our title, turn it on, turn on the subtitle, and the subtitle because we have um, conditional formatting, field value, subtitle, subtitle max min. So we get our maximum revenue is $124,000, which is that. Minimum revenue is $25,000, which is that. All right, I'll just do a little bit of formatting here. So my um, title will be max and min net order revenue. All right, I'll maybe make this slightly smaller, make it a gray background. My subtitle, I want to be a bit more prominent. Again, you don't necessarily need to follow my format in here. Um, I just want to highlight the, the maximum values rather than the title itself. Um, title, I might make it even a little bit. Just so it sits in the background, put in a divider, don't like the padding, spacing. I just want to get that kind of um, same look that I had previously. Okay, so on to the next one, which is the average. So for the averages, I want to create another measure. So this time we want it like a dynamic average. So the average revenue month. Um, so we want, we want the average iterator. So again, if we um, select um, a different date range, um, I want the average to sort of recalculate itself. Net order revenue. Right. So that is done there. Um, there's no um, sort of if statement required because this is the average through all the months. So you're not looking for a max or a min for a single month. You're looking at the average across all the months. So we don't need to have that sort of if statement. Okay, so here um, what we want is a reference line. We want to add in a line, constant line, and we use our FX. We've got that in there. We turn on the data label. Um, probably don't want all those decimal places, so that's our um, average uh, net order revenue across all the selected months. Uh, as I said previously, I'm using the average here, but I mean, you could use this could be a target revenue, it could be, you know, a median. Um, could be a lower percentile, upper percentile. It could be any any real value that you want to um, create. So what we're going to do next is create a color conditional format that sort of says if the net order revenue for that month is above the average line, 
then it's going to return this type of green color if it's below it's going to be this sort of yellow color so you just get a, a differentiation between the months that are up above and below um, and average okay so the formula is quite similar to what we used previously so average color format average rev and in this instance we can just use the average revenue month we don't need to rewrite that calculation because we're not using that if statement mm -hmm. right. so again we just use the if I can spell return switch true and if the net order revenue is greater than the average rev then we want to return that um, color again four five seven eight, eight c if the net order revenue is less than the average revenue then we return that yellow color f2b two, 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 two. And that's really it. We can put in a an optional just in case there's something that is exactly the um, the average revenue. So just as a grey color, um, I thought it will be used. Uh, we could use the one that we've used previously just for consistency. Eo eo eo. So again, for um, for this, we go back to our columns. So we got our average. We apply it in here, and there we go. So for our average line, these months that are above the average, we see we have this sort of greenish color. Those below, we have the yellow. So that's kind of what we wanted. Now if I look at what we wanted here for our subtitle, we want it, I wanted the total months, so the total months that are in the frame, how many are greater than the average and how many months are less than the average. So we want to recreate that here now. So first we want to calculate the total selected months, so the total number of months inside our range. So this one we are going to use a count ax and then we all select it so it's oops so it's a similar pattern to what we used previously so end of month and then our average average revenue month so we just want to count the number months inside here and then the next two measures are a little more tricky but what we want to do is count the number dynamically be able to count the number of months above the average and then or greater than the average uh, or less than the average uh, so I just want to create um, what I want to do is just create another table and this is just summarize months. Um, this is summarize columns. End of month. And then revenue. Oops. It's my net order revenue. And that's it. So what I just want is that this is just a summary table because I want to be able to calculate, basically just count the rows of um, the months where it's above or below the average. So that's all I want to do here. So I just wanted to create that table first. And then I'll come back to my calculation here. Basic number of months, greater than average. I want to be able to calculate that. So my variable for the average revenue equals average 
grab me a month. is filter the summarize months where the revenue is greater than the average revenue summarize months end of month okay so that will give me the number of months greater than the average. And then what I want is um, the same for less than the average. So I just copy and paste this and I call it less than average and simply just say whatever's less than the average revenue. And those are my three calculations that I need to create that subtitle. Okay, so to create that subtitle, we call it subtitle greater or less than the average equals so bar total months equals total selected months. So if you do all these measures up front, then creating this is quite simple. You just have these variables bar greater than average equals the number of months greater than average bar less than average equals oops, number of months less than average and then we just want to return the format so we want total months so again it's the same same type of format again, total months and format um, total months. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is a bit easier because it's just a number, so we don't need any sort of complicated formatting. Um, and then we just say and pipe. So we want, we want greater than average. Uh, colon and format greater than average number. Close brackets. less than average. Title greater than or less than. So we've got our 22 months greater than average, seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the rest are less than average. All right, now quickly do this formatting. just about it for the second chart okay so for the third one we're going to use this dynamic parameter range um, so I'm going to insert a parameter so instead of what I've done previously fields this is simply a numeric um, parameter um, 
and what I'm gonna use is the decimal number between zero and one increment of 0 0.05 default is zero I'll just add a slash on the page um, again you can um, you can modify this whatever way you want really um, and what we want to do is on the parameter value uh, we want to have this as a percentage so not the parameter value the parameter itself percentage and we'll just go for no decimal places You can make that the 1% or whatever increment you want. I'm just using it at 5% for this example. Okay, so next, what I want to do is create two measures. So one will be the lower bond and one will be the upper bond based on this parameter so that if we change this to, let's say, 10%, what we want is 10% both above and below um, our uh, selected value in this in this instance we're going to use I'm going to use the average again so plus average plus or minus 10% okay so new measures average revenue month um, lower bond equals average X all selected similar to our discount one minus the parameter so this is basically getting the average value and then multiplying it by one minus the parameter so if the parameter is 10% it's one minus 10% so it's 90% so it'll be 90% of the average value um, so that's a lower bond I'll copy and paste this because we want to use this for the upper as well So what we want to do is upper bond, and then all we want to do here is add. Now you, you can do whatever you want with this. You could say just you want it lower or above, or you want somewhere in between. Um, you can modify this calculation to whatever, um, whatever you need in terms of setting those boundaries. Okay, so for this one, we actually need to convert this to a, um, a line and clustered column chart and on this secondary line axis we want the average let me see what this is average revenue month And a little bit of modification on this is I don't want the legend and I don't actually want the line itself and um, so I go to the line and I would re reduce this to zero so I don't want the line but I want the sort of the area that area that I had previously and in order to get that area we actually have to use um, error bars and we use the sort of upper and lower bond, which is basically our upper and lower calculation that we use that we calculated just before. So for this series, we have two. So we have net order revenue and the average revenue month. So what we want, we want error bars only for the average revenue month. So for net order revenue, we have to make sure that um, the bar is off. So I have to turn that on in order to turn it off and then turn it off here. Then I go to average, I enable, and then this will be upper, and this will be lower. And we turn on the error band itself, and the bar gets turned off. So we have this 
area instead of a bar. So if I adjust this, the size of that area increases and decreases based on my parameter because we have the upper and lower bond. Now we can have just the fill or you can have a fill in line. So it gives you like this little line at the on the on the outside. And that's more just your personal preference, whether you want to have this or not. So now that that's done, we just want to apply color conditional formatting again, similar to the above. So what is above or above the, the target area or this area that we have or below. So by now you'll be familiar, we have the color format. And so what I want to call this is average color format. And then we just have this upper and lower boundary. So ULB, you can call it whatever you um, want for average revenue upper. So you may, we need the average revenue upper bond is equal to our upper value our average revenue lower bond is equal to our lower and then return switch true so if our net order revenue is greater than the, the upper bond Trusty um, four five seven eight eight C old trusty green color. If it's less, then we want the yellow color to be E twenty two. And again, just to, for completeness in the gray color and that's that so we go back up to our not our lines but our columns field value color upper and lower bond ah man I must have made a mistake on the calculation let me see what that It'll be. Oh, that's the problem when you copy and paste. So it's if it's less than the lower. So it's less than the lower, not just less than that. Okay, so if I return another mistake, I didn't put a hashtag in with the grey colour. So again, okay. So it's always good to show these mistakes because if people make them in real life, they can see where the problem, where the problems originate from. So yes, don't copy and paste, write your code up. So again, just a bit of a play with that. It shows that it's working well. Even if I take it down to zero, it should reflect what's up above here. We get that line. That's the line from the error band. So next we want to create the subtitle, which is basically quite similar to this, but we want it both above and below um, this area. Now, although I said don't copy and paste, um, I'm going to copy and paste. So we're going to use a very similar formula um, to calculate the number above um, this boundary. So what I'm going to rename this is greater than the upper boundary um, and our average X will be the average upper. And we always want to return, we'll call this upper. Again, it's a similar calculation to what we had previously. So we're just calculating what is 
this value and then count the number of months above that value. And again, we'll use it for the less than. So I remember what it is. Um, so again, it's just the number of months less than the lower boundary. So we calculate what is the lower boundary. And we count the number of months that are below that lower boundary. So that's simply what that calculation is doing. And then just to get another copy and paste rather than having to write all this out again. So the subtitle. We want to have a quite a similar subtitle so we have um, greater or less than the boundary so our total months is the same um, greater than upper boundary less than lower boundary so number of months greater than upper boundary number of months less than lower boundary so we have total months greater than upper bond. And that's format the greater than upper bond. And then less than lower bond is less than lower bond. So it's the same, it's basically the same type of subtitle. So we're following the same sort of format. Again, we jump in here to the title um, to the subtitle greater than or less than the boundary. So again, here you have total months twenty two. So how many are greater than the upper bond? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's six in there. Um, again, I'll just format these uh, titles. I'll maybe just fast forward on them so you don't have to watch me do them again. Okay, so I just did a couple of um, formatting on or some formatting on the um, on the title and subtitle just to skip that so you don't have to sit through it. So that is all three of our charts done. Um, so the finishing touch. Um, it, which is why we've had all of these calculations that I've had all selected end of month. The finishing touch here is we want to put in a um, time slicer. Okay. So we want to put in the end of month. And what I want to do is what we've done previously is take out the sort of May and June. So I've added this end of month slicer, but I noticed that it's not calculating correctly. It's getting this greater than average. The numbers aren't adding up here. Um, and I forgot to mention it was, I sort of overlooked it. Um, I actually have to connect because of all of these um, boundaries, they're calling out this summarize months revenue and the summarized months end of month. Um, I forgot to mention that at the minute it's sitting out here as a disconnected table. I actually need to connect that up to my date table. So sorry, this way here. So we have our date connected to our end of month. If I go back here um, and I adjust this, I'll now see that it's actually adding up 
So I've got total months 12, greater than the upper bound is these three, less than the lower bound is the four, same with the greater than or less than the average, I'm getting six of each. So again, don't forget to hook up your date tables as well. Um, again, yeah, parameters, it's recalculating four above the boundary, seven below. Um, so yes, that's how to create this. If I go back to my original file, it's kind of very similar if I flip between them. The only difference is really just adding in these like final um, touch, touches um, just to give the titles. As I've mentioned um, several times in the writing and um, in other videos, uh, the intention here is to provide a concept of how to do these things and maybe apply them and then take that concept and use it and adapt it to your own needs and benefits. Even something something simple as here, if I have this as a column chart, I mean, in reality, it could be a line chart just by connecting it across and doing some modifications. Uh, there, there's sort of limitless possibilities in what you can um, do with this type of information. But yeah, we've looked at these three scenarios, maximum, greater or less than an average, or greater than less than a, a target area or an area that's defined by um, dynamic par parameters. Um, if there are other topics um, you're interested in seeing, um, let me know in the comments or hit me up on LinkedIn. I've already got a couple of more ideas for videos, but yeah, if you have any of your own, uh, let me know and I'll have a look and see if I can put something together. All right, until the next time, thanks again.